Sara. Come on, take up this. This is what you have to do. You understand? This is what you have. And I'm feeling like a Phil Podin this morning. Good morning again. Great to have you join us right here on Sports Report the Show. It's time for us to give you sports updates and the nation uh, all over the world. We won with the first one that comes to say uh, it's just tomorrow. There is no better time than now. Let me say it again because Nigeria Super Power comes with a training tackle with the Bayana Bayana. And one lady, Ramalepe, has come to say that it is a do or die affair. I'll get on the story quickly with you this morning before we uh, delve into something else. Now, Bayana. South Africa uh, defender. Her name is Lebohan Gramalepe. Has described the team upcoming 24 Olympic qualifier against Nigeria as a do or die. Now, the two rivals are battling for one of African top two spots uh, for the women's football event. The two leg qualifiers expected to keenly contest uh, within both sides, desperate to feature at the Olympics. Now, that's for Paris. Now, while the Super Eagles are, uh, you know, also keen on making a return to the Olympic after 16 years absence. Talk about the focus, I beg your pardon. Bayana Bayana are looking to qualify after missing out for four years in Tokyo. Ramalepe stated that the desire of both teams to secure a place at the Olympic will make both games a very tough one. So for both sides, they need to get the result okay. And I don't know, at this point in time, I'm thinking, I don't know, I can't say Nigeria will get the result of South Africa, but whichever side that comes out okay, uh, comes out alive, would be getting the result, and that will be for tomorrow and it's Friday. Don't forget, five days after that encounter, we'll be traveling to Pretoria to take on the South Africans and that's away from home and that's how big it is. But welcome again to the Sports Republic Show. I am KZK, your host, and I have David A to talk about this woman. Stay here. Let's talk. David, good morning. Great to have you. A very good morning to you, KZ. Uh, a beautiful day to talk sports and, um, well, uh, Ramalepe coming to talk tough. Mm -hmm. We know this thing. You call it talk what? Talk talk. Talk talk. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, it's um, it's a do or die, like mm -hmm. we have all uh, seen. But then uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we go with this one now. Super Eagles drop in latest updated list release. But we're gonna break. When we return, we we'll give you updates. Stay here. From the views on the street, we go to bed empty hunger. To the blaring horns of a hustling city, the loudest voices of the common man got a medium to be heard. This particular administration, they were coming unprepared. It's not a bad thing to renovate the president's lodge. Through top-notch programming, unbiased reportage of news, sports, business, entertainment, and cultural documentaries, voice of the people. 90.3 FM became a symbol for 21st century media. And now, a new baby is born. Voice of the People Television. VOP TV. Youthful. 
full of vigor and penchant for excellence in the continent's media space. Exposing the wrongs, applauding the rights, dissecting the news without fear or favor, through factual and accurate stories and contents. Corruption kills three things and makes the society. Representing the interests of the people and giving them a voice. Voice of the People TV is here to stay towards building a fair society. VOP TV, Voice of the People Television, truly a voice for the people. Always at the start by to talk about the people ranking. Welcome from that quick break. Let's give you an update about the Super Eagles dropping the latest updated list. And this one doesn't sound cold. In the latest FIFA World Ranking release on Thursday, 4 April 2024, Nigeria Super Eagles experienced a drop from 28 to 30 position. The ranking were made public by the World Football Governing Body, uh, FIFA, on their website. And now pick out now the Eagles. Talk about the Super Eagles currently occupy the text spot, trailing behind the Atlas Lions of Morocco and the Teranga Lions of Senegal. Morocco hold the top position in Africa and stands at the 13th place globally, while Senegal secured the second spot on the continent and 17th place in the world ranking. The previous ranking released by February witnessed a significant climb for the Eagles as they ascended 14 places to reach the 28th position. This notable improvement was attributed to the team's performance at the 23 African Cup of Nations in Africa, where they secured a second place finish looking ahead. Uh, top top qualifier and other Eagles opponents in the rankings of Africa, Bayana, uh, Bafana, Bafana, are uh, slated to play against Eagles in Uyo, Gosu, the Private International Stadium, to be exact. For March Day 3, dropped to 59th position. Conversely, Benin Republic set to host the Nigerian team, climbed to 97th spot in the ranking. And that's the update. We told you about the Nigerian Premier Football League. Uh, but I have David, welcome again. Uh, let's talk about this. This one, does it sound cool for you? This ranking? Um, honestly, I. I so here's a, a very interesting part. Cote d'Ivoire defeated Uruguay. Mm -hmm. I think that's two goes to one or something. Right. <clears throat> they said Cote d'Ivoire did not move up the ranking. They said Cote d'Ivoire is not somewhere around the first three in Africa. Okay. That goes to question what exactly is FIFA bringing to us? Mm. If Morocco is going to be the top, Senegal the second, and of course Nigeria the third. The same Nigeria that lost to uh, um, um, the Eagles of Mali. Yeah. So it's it's a whole lot when we start looking at it from that perspective. What is, what is exactly the yardstick to making it to the top, to making it to the top of FIFA's ranking? Mm. I mean, it, it's, it's 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 quite unfortunate. Right. We were supposed to play Argentina. We couldn't play Argentina. Mm -hmm. We had to play um, Ghana, which we won. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we played Eagles of Mali. Cote d'Ivoire, after winning the Nations Cup, <laughs> defeated Uruguay. Mm. And then they are not moving up the ranking. That's, that's, the math is not massive. What's your point? My point is FIFA should explain to us what it takes to climb up the ladder of the ranking and what it takes to drop down the ladder because I still cannot believe Cote d'Ivoire is not in the first three of African football as we speak. That okay. for me is a problem. Are you trying the to mass say, is not massive? Are you saying the Atlas Lions should be dropped down a little bit, certain position? I'm not even. Ball. So okay, they're, not your, they're not your problem. They're not my problem. I'm talking about the champions of Africa. That is so wrong. So they should tell us what exactly needs to be done for this math to be mapping very well. Okay. Because right now you need a job. All right. I understand how David e is actually feeling on the show right now. Uh, let's give you more update about the MPFL week results update. Kind of feelings. Uh, get ranked by Aimba 5 0, and Dubai United also ended a barren streak. Now, in the Nigerian Premier Football League, FIFA clash on Wednesday, Kano Pillar so far the 5 0 defeat at the hands of Aimba. The title holder showcased a dominant performance with goals called by Joseph Atule, who backed the Braves as well as Happy Egozuziam uh, and also Chijo King Boma and also Aladi Balogo. Meanwhile, in Uyo, a uh, quick update Doma United put an end to a 10 game winless streak with a 1 0 victory over Aqua United, Emmanuel Jessam. Uh, secured the South goal in the sixth minute of the match. Lobby South, after a 1 1 draw with Sporting Lagos, also dropped to the third position on the league table. Sporting Lagos took the lead with a goal by Junior Lacosta in the first half, but Samuel Tizan collapsed to the visitors 
in the 64th minute. League leaders Rangers climbed to nail victory against Sunshine Stars in Akure, while uh, with uh, Carlo Weke and also Emmanuel Yebuchi scoring for the Flying Antelope. And lastly, in Omaha, Abia Warriors secured a 1 0 victory over Fletcher United with Sam St. Ovi scoring the winning goal uh, on the show. We have a man on the star line, uh, Olamide. I don't know if he's in already. Olamide, can you hear me? Good morning. Is it in with me, Olamide? Can you hear me? You. Are you there? I can. I'm there. I can hear you now. Great to have yeah, you join us on the you. Sports Republic show. Welcome. Let's talk about sports. Uh, I want to put you on the edge quickly. There's no time to relax on the show, you know. Uh, tell me about the game come tomorrow. The Bayana Bayana. Will they get it right here in Abuja? MK Wabela for sure to be exact. Or will it be all about the Super Falcon? Yes, yes, yes. Um, I think the Super Falcons, they've been, they've been doing well. So far, so good with um, players like Aziza Koshuala and other stars that we okay. have. So I think they will be doing well. It is a bus stop for the Bayana Bayana. So they will be doing well. They shouldn't even expect to, to you know, to, to deliver anything. This is, these are our super falcons. Come on. Hmm. So I think it's just, you know, a walk in the park. Can you be quick to give me a prediction for the game tomorrow? Just a quick one. Well, not the scoreline per se, but I'll say just a win for the Super Falcons. Mm. So, David, let me say just a win. No, it, well, well I, I want to go against that line, a walk in the park, because the Super Falcons are playing against the champions of Africa. Mm. Let's not take that away. Yeah. It's not going to be a walk in the park from my position where I stand from. Uh, but then, a win is very possible. Very, mm -hmm. very possible. Yeah. But very, to very be a, a walk in the park, uh -uh, it's not going to be a walk in the, in, a walk in the park. Okay. Amazing. Okay, so uh, quick one. Let me ask you this one. Uh, allow me to stay with me. Uh, the game, the MPFL looks highly competitive at this point in time. Uh, Mr. Akonde think I think can stay with you. I don't even know. Uh, anybody's there, you know, they're third in the position. But on top is Rangers. Uh, it's looking very dicey. At this, at this point, it can be like, I don't even know who gets the result. What team would you say that, what team can you actually point out now to say, yes, this one will win the league? Um, you know, even you know, linking it with the with the EPA right now, we can't yeah. say that a particular team would emerge victorious or would win the league at the end of the day. We can only we can only predict or you know talk based on some statistics, based on their form, their experience, and all that. So, um, Aimba and um, Rangers, it's a tight one between both of them, and we can even see other teams coming from behind as well. But I think. I think Enyimba, Enyimba should be able to, you know, get to the finish line before Rangers. I think so. Okay, so, um, David, so ranking, you talked about it, how offended you are. <laughs> um, come with me, let's talk about the FIFA latest ranking. The Super Eagles have dropped from up to down, 28 to 30 position uh, right now on the FIFA ranking. How good is this for us? Can you from hear me? Eight to 30 yeah, I'm with you from 8 to 30 positions. From 28, 28 to 30, yeah, we just dropped again, like two points dropped. 28 to 30 position. Well, 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 I think we look too much, uh, we, we, we focus too much on the FIFA rankings. Okay. During the AFCON, during the AFCON, we saw teams like Cape Verde play good, beautiful football, even more than the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Okay. We saw countries like Equatorial Guinea turning up for the occasion even not looking at any FIFA ranking or something. Mm. I think we should look inwards, focus on ourselves, focus on our game. Anywhere the FIFA likes, let them rank us. But let's just focus on our game, not on you know a particular FIFA ranking or something. I think we should do more on focusing on our, on our game, working more on our weaknesses, you know, getting better as a team, and also bringing in new breed of players, new set of players into the team. Also incorporating our homegrown players, not just every time we have to bring in players from Spain, from England, from, from uh, any part of the world. So I, I think we shouldn't focus too much on the FIFA ranking or anywhere. Let's just get better as a team. That's just Okay, so uh, stay with us. Um, allow me there on the sound line. Let's give you an update about the six players nominated for uh, the MPFL Play of the Month and the Rate of the Nigerian Premier Football League Play of the Month Award for match. Now, six players have been nominated. The shortlisted players include the likes of Adam Salamaleka of Remo Stars, Christian Fijagara of Shooting Stars, Gordon Abaje, AGK of Kochuko representing the Rangers, Nero Salas of Fletcher United, and Sani Suleiman from Aqua United. Veteran forward as well, Abaje showcased his forwards and skills with two goals 
for the flying antelope during the month. Now, with midfielders, we uh, talk about we the midfielder. Uh, with the stellar performance, he's contributed to Rangers' position on top of the NPFL table. Allow the Lakers scored two crucial goals to separate uh, matches against Aimba and then uh, Ayesa United securing two of Rainbow Stars' pre victories in the month, keeping them in the running of the NPFL title. Now, uh, Piagrara maintained his impressive form for shooting stars by netting four goals in match. While Salas demonstrated his progress with a hat pick for Playton United, bringing the season uh, goal tally for this young man to six. Suleiman also emerged as a key player for Aqua United since joining uh, mid-season, shouldering the goals, scoring responsibilities, and earning recognition as one of the best mid-season signings. He has already scored six goals in five matches for the promised keepers, and that's just what it is. Finding the net five times in match alone. The winner of the award will be announced hopefully for next week. Uh, let's give you more updates quickly um, uh, <laughs> while we talk about club football. Okay, but before we go this, uh, David, tell me. Yesterday we talked about the Turkish side, and now the news is out. Yeah. This man not fine. Is he okay? Oh well. Uh, Osai Samuel. <laughs> uh, yesterday evening, fortunately, I was with the guys uh, at the uh, locker room. Right. For it. Um, I like the fact that yes, Fenerbahce also went forward to say, look, this young man did defend himself in self-defense, and of course, when the Turkish FA looked at the full uh, footage. They uncovered the fact that, yes, it was self-defense and even find transfer mm. sports. So um, it's a plus. It's a beautiful one. Uh, that goes to say that the Turkish FA are also trying so hard to make sure that um, they, they put sanity, yes, sanity to the league. And, of course, that find also is a beautiful one as well. For me. Okay, so bright aside, Samuel escapes Turkish FA route for beaten fan. The way the headline looks, it doesn't sound like it's a sweet one. But Eagles defender, I'll talk about Super Eagles by the side of Samuel, has been found not guilty for beating a transactional fan. Uh, talking about a pitch invader after Fenerbahce 3 to win away from home. Now, the Turkish Football Federation on Monday informed the Nigerian uh, side. It was among the three yellow Canaries players who will appear before the disciplinary hearings of the TFF in the wake of the pitch invasion, which happened during the Turkish Super League game involving Transport and Fenerbahce on March 17th. A uh, verdict from the disciplinary hearing on Wednesday read that Transport has received a six-game ban and a fine for events on the field and not uh, following guidelines. Now, so Transport trainer Egerman Coleman and Fenerbahce player Ayifan Khan Egibrat, uh, you know, have received a one-game ban and fine for fighting. Why Fenerbahce player, the likes of Battle Style Samuel, has been cleared for no wrongdoing, while J.D. Osatewed has also received, uh, received a uh, one game ban and a fine for fighting and action towards stand. Alamide, how good is this one for Bright or Os uh, Samuel? Yes, I, when I actually saw the video, when I saw the video of um, Osai Samuel defending mm -hmm. himself, yes, I was like, um, even though Nigerians and all the other fans across the world were applauding yeah. him for you know coming up for his team, defending them, I was like, he would still kind of uh, meet the FA, the panel, we we'll still face the panel for um, for doing that. But thank God he's not, you know, being prosecuted. Mm. Although the fan is wrong to have, you know, come to the pitch, the stand is there for you to stay. Not You, you are not supposed to invade the pitch. So once yeah. you invade the pitch, you are now a threat to both the players and the referee and all other officials. So I think it's a right call. But it's some right reports call are the, saying, uh, I mean, some reports are saying, I mean, this it. man did too much. You can't blow it, they blow that guy. You don't see that blow. You don't see him. You, you don't see the blow. The you said, you don't see him. No, no. No, no, no. The man has, the, the fan has already trespassed. If mm -hmm. you don't enter pitch, you are not in your zone anymore. So anything right. your eyes is there, anything you go through, you just have to bear it. And then again, the full footage uh, right. showed that the fan was one that attacked him first but, right right and then he retaliated yes. with that yeah, there's something funny yeah. about that massive the turkey fa uh mm. the turkey ttf they now had to put a pause on it mm. they didn't see they didn't show that part well so, like everywhere that, around turkey that the, 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 the ttf actually had the full video because that's Fenerbahce, why it was, was, Fenerbahce Fenerbahce also innocent. submitted the full video right to them and said look this player did not just do this by himself the fan attacked him first and of course our Bini brother we don't get joy the point okay, so we give you, let's talk about the EPL. Um, in one sentence, allow me to tell me about Phil Foden. How would you describe this man? He's just 23. Amazing personality for me. What would you call him? Or Phil Foden? Phil, Phil Foden is a fantastic player. He's a very, very fantastic player. Yesterday, we saw um, 
Alan was not on the pitch, even the brain was not on the pitch, but he stepped up to the occasion right. with relative ease. With ease, he just, you know, sliced past his opponent and, you know, made fantastic goals. The first one was a free kick. Even the other two goals were just, you know, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. That okay. guy is something else. That's how big this man is. Phil Foden is just 23. He scored his first, um, no, this is the third time he scored a hat-trick, uh, you know, for Manchester City. And yesterday, he showed class in the world of sport. Man City has not beaten the side of the Premier League uh, top five and six attempts this season prior to the visit of fourth place Aston Villa to the Etihad. But Pep Guardiola this time showed faith in the depth of his team, you know, in that game. And by leaving Haaland and Kevin De Bruyne on the bench for the full duration, that's 90 minutes ahead of the hectic schedule in the defense of three competition. Now Pep Guardiola has held forward in as the best player in the English top flight this season and the 23-year-old backed up with his manager's word by taking the goal tally for the season to 21 all goal involvement now for Ford shown in the absence of Edinburgh how and a KDB Kevin De Bruyne as an England international a hat trick handed Man City a trampoline uh 4-1 win over Aston Villa on Wednesday now the champion responded emphatically to questions about the ability to win the biggest game to move within one point of leaders Arsenal at top of the Premier League Man City were beating 1-0 by Villa when the side met back in December but that was their last defeat as Pep Guardiola's men are now unbeaten in 24 games. David, describe a feel for them for me. He showed class yesterday. Amazing, amazing uh, player. And um, I like the fact that he came to the party as well. Right. And to think that uh, Manchester City needed that win to really tell themselves that we can still be yeah. in uh, this league race. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, it's, it's beautiful. I, I see a feel for them in the next two, three years, being the only person that would manage to hold the team together when the likes of Kevin De Bruyne start phasing yeah. out. And I like also the fact that uh, Pep Guardiola has a way of playing these players and making them have game time mm -hmm. and making things happen even amongst the players. The ones that are not playing regularly, they're getting game time, they're delivering. We're yet to see a Jack Grealish as well, who is another big name right. to come to well, the party. Well, actually, booed yesterday while the game was on, but they can't even tell you. They were booing, booing him and... He when the results are coming, he just be tired. He gets it. So, but then, I, I like the fact that Phil Foden came to the party yesterday and, of course, single-handedly took Manchester City to another level of, you know, having to believe that they can be champions again. I don't know how long Arsenal will be on top of the log. Um, today, we'll see Liverpool trade a tackle with that very side. And Liverpool, Sheffield United, at. Uh, a place where they say you will never walk alone, and that's Anfield. And later, Chelsea will be at home today to play uh, Man United. But let's talk about the Liverpool one. Allow me to stay with me. Uh, Liverpool today, what is the fate? How long will Arsenal be on top? Well, um, I'm expecting Liverpool to win today. Though it might not really be um, a, 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 a stroll in the park per se. But Liverpool has um, a lot to lose more than Sheffield United. They have um, a league to win. Um, I think um, coming to the end of this season, where we'll be seeing club, you know, bow out of the of the of the club. They're trying to, as much as possible to win the league for club. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just I, I think Liverpool will edge out. They will edge out Sheffield United. That's for sure. Okay. Okay. So quick one. Uh, tell me about the game tonight at Stamford Bridge. Everybody knows right now Chelsea. Uh, feels to be the side, not doing well. And someone was saying to me, if they win, they don't win, they go see the 11. <laughs> that one not going to switch me, not to make sense. Honestly, honestly. So even <laughs> the game, Manchester United and Chelsea, the mm. game is not as intense and it's not as, you know, amplified as it used to be. You think so? both of them used to be tied to contenders. They used okay. to be tied to contenders in, 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 in the recent, in, um, let's say, five, six years ago. But in recent times, Chelsea is not doing well. They've been in 11th or 10th position for the past, you know, about 8 to 9 games now. And even Manchester United too, they are just there. They are not in the top 4. They are not, you know, they are not up, they are not down. They are just in the middle there. And, you know, they, they, their performance has been fluctuating so far. So, so I don't think there is much focus on the match as well like that. I don't, so, I don't okay, let me get you on the path that says Liverpool. Is that a walk in the park for Liverpool today? Let me get on For that. Liverpool and Sheffield. Right. It's, no, I would say it's a win. I would, I would say... I would say it's a win for Liverpool. Yes, it's. Um, I would have said it would be a walk in the park, but there's pressure on Liverpool now to get back on top of the of the table. There's yeah. pressure on them, so they have to deliver. So that would be um, the problem with them. But for Chelsea, 
Chelsea, Manchester United, both of them, they are just dead of two feet. Let me even get you right. So, you the what club do you find? I don't know where you get it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan. Uh, we'll jump and we went to Arsenal stories. There we go. <laughs> now, Arsenal defeated <laughs> Luton to go on top. Yesterday, we saw that one at Emirates Stadium. Luton were defeated by Arsenal, allowing the Gunners to reclaim the top spot of the Premier League table despite the absence of Bukayo Saka, who was sidelined due to a knock so far in the previous match against Manchester City. Now, Pep Guardiola side. Uh, got the result right, but for Mikel Arteta's side, they changed the style, managed to secure victory against their hard-working opponent. Moving back above Liverpool in the league style, and Captain Martin Odegaard in Norwegian International opened the scoring for the holes in the 24th minute, while Emmy Smith Rowe uh, challenged on Pelly Roder and Banzo led to penalty, while Arsenal doubled their lead just before half time. Now, in the 44th minute, if you missed that game, you could see the Japanese defender, you know, Dalki Hachiroka, uh, I went at league. Uh, in advance, the was sorry, beg your pardon, scored an own goal while trying to intercept the race nail same pass, with Smith Rowe creating the opportunity after final space in the penalty area. That's why injuries are plugging Luton, including the presence of 16 year old schoolboy. Uh, he's called uh, the fader, but I word, Christian Chikose in the substitute bench. They managed to keep us now from running away with the game. The Gunners keeper David Ryan made a crucial save from Rose Barkley free kick just before half time with the win. As we talk, Arsenal reach 68 points, edging past Liverpool by one point. Man City also defeated Aston Villa 4-1 on Wednesday, as said, in a position to talk about the league, also on 67 points. So you had me ask this question, David. Mm. How long would Arsenal be on top? If Liverpool gets it right tonight, right. it will be two points clear. Oh. Um, let me give somebody at the back and something to enjoy about. Okay. Like my friend uh, Chisomo Bono, right. of Sports Sports, mm -hmm. will do. Arsenal! Arsenal! Well, let's see how Arsenal. <laughs> I see that's a lot of like, Arsenal. Like a, long, a, long, a long message is really going to that. <laughs> well, well, for me, I honestly want to applaud the fact that Arsenal has been consistent. And uh, unlike last season, they had the way of just doing their Amaka thing, right. disappointing fans. Yeah. But this season, they have tried so hard mm -hmm. to be very consistent. Beautiful game of football we saw yesterday. Even though I would say, yes, they struggled because, yes, a Luton Town uh, a team scores anybody. Yeah. But Arsenal found a way to just cage these guys and they got the, the, the needed results. So, so what, what? Would Arsenal be winning mm, the league? Okay. It's still very tough. Liverpool today will be making a major statement. Will they win today? Liverpool will bury, not, okay. not win. They will bury Sheffield United. I mean, this okay, so is a good time for Sheffield they United. They will worry with him in the company. At Anfield today. <laughs> Quote me, it's going to be more okay, than three so goals. So, more than three goals is a big one for those who don't do the, do the paper team, like David Riley said. More than three goals. But, um, Alamide, let me ask you this very, very important question. Are you here? I'm here with you. What is the difference between this Arsenal set of players and that of last season? What's the special about Arsenal now? Yes, um, Arsenal of this season and mm -hmm. that of last season. Last season, um, during the when it got to the most important part of the season, I think the joy of being on the table caught up with those players. It got into their head. Instead okay. of them to take it game after game, just try to win this game, try to win the next game. They were looking at this. There's this euphoria of okay, we are the league leaders. We would win this league. So the pressure was too much on them. But I think the Arsenal of, of today have learned from their loss last season. And now they're taking things one step at a time, not trying to concede goals, making sure that they are not conceding goals, but scoring more goals. Yes, I think they've learned from that. And you can see they played Manchester City twice, even twice this season, we had the committee right. shield. Man City only scored once. They only scored once. Unlike last season, where they were running um, riot against Arsenal, scoring goals for fun. So I think they've learned. Even Liverpool couldn't defeat Arsenal in two games in this season. Arsenal defeated Manchester United, drew Chelsea. So I think they've learned. They've learned their lessons. Okay, so say it to me. Say it to me on the show quickly now. Arsenal winning the league is it possible? That's a very very tough one because Manchester City and Liverpool they are not to be to be joked with. They've been the league leaders for the past five to six seasons, exchanging the league in, in between them. So I think Arsenal, if they continue like this and hope either Liverpool or Man City slips up, so they can get the opportunity. Okay, so let's go uh, talk about the French Cup. Mbappe fires Paris Saint-Germain into another final. Uh, yesterday we saw that in the French Cup semi-final, Reigns 
uh, were edged out by Paris and Germany, securing a PSG spot in the final against Leon. Thanks to go from the World Cup 2018 winner, Kylian Mbappe's goal, uh, separating both sides, Mbappe decides to go came in the 40th minute with his shots final in the bottom corner after a deflection. Earlier in the match, the Frenchman had a penalty saved by a Reigns keeper. I talk about Steve Mandanda, who also tipped Mbappe's shot uh, onto the bar in the 10th minute. Those victories set Paris and Germany on course to potentially add to their 14th French Cup title with their last win in the competition occurring in the 2020-21 season. Now, additionally, the win keeps Paris and Germany in contention for those treble winning, including the League 1 and the Champions League, <laughs> where they are set to face the Barcelona in the quarterfinal. It's worth noting that Mbappe, who scored a crucial goal in his final season with Paris Saint Germain before joining Spanish giant Real Madrid in the summer. Um, let's talk about it in the studio. I don't know what um, the ex player is actually doing at this point. Right. We've seen on Enrique, the manager of Paris Saint Germain, playing the man game, saying about we might not believe him, just maybe. That aside. Now, no long, Robert Perez has come to say Mbappe will not be the first player to say no to Real Madrid. Just Liverpool will be a better option. Mm. Is it ever possible? What on earth can make Mbappe not to go to Madrid? Trust me, uh, Mbappe at this point knows where he's going. He knows. He knows where he's going. Do you know? It's almost clear. Do you know? The handwriting <laughs> is on the wall. Okay. Mbappe is going to Real Madrid. Let's just, maybe, another different kind of miracle might just happen. Right. Where he would shift his gear to, to, to a Liverpool side. But let's not forget. Liverpool is going to be without a Jurgen Club, who is another major reason why right. some players still go to Liverpool. Well, you know, you know, one of one of Robert Pires' yeah, yeah, yeah. talk was the fact he said he said it to the media. He said, if Mbappe stays back to Liverpool, or if Mbappe moves to Liverpool, right. he will be in a club without a lot of pressure, unlike that of Real Madrid. Everybody wants to see you. But then I feel like that's where he gets the ball on top himself. Okay, let's talk you about just, that man. You just said it. Let's talk about that man on beh <laughs> uh, behind the scene. Uh, allow me there. Do you want to go contrary to what we've said? My opinion, don't get me wrong, I want to say again that Mbappe needs to leave for Madrid. The time is right now. He spent literally almost all his life in uh, talk about Paris and Germany. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think, I think Mbappe is even a Real Madrid player already. Okay. He's, just here to make any, <laughs> he's just here to make any official appearance. <laughs> his mind is okay. there already. Okay. <laughs> so he, he, he leaves. Nothing stops him. Yes, yes, yes. He has the opportunity to fill in Karim Benzema's boots. Because so far so good, we've not seen any yeah, proper nine that would mm -hmm. be able to nip it in the ball just right. like Mbappe. So it's, 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 he has a free, what's it called? There is an empty seat for him there just to sit there, just to fill in. Mm. So I think I wish him best of luck. Okay. That, that seat is not so empty because yeah. Enrique is there. The younger Brazilian. <laughs> so. right. But again... Well, well, that's seems true. like a very major Real Madrid player right now. Okay, so let's go yeah. to the Czech Cup. Let's travel. No travel from here, from studio. Enter Czech. Uh, Victor Latunji, the call him, helps Pat Pra secure the final. In the Czech Super Cup, uh, some call it the Czech Cup semi-final. On Wednesday night, a goal was called for Pat Pra by Victor Latunji, contributing to Tony victory uh, over Opava. Away from home, those wins secure Pat Pra place in the final of the Czech Cup. Uh, marking their third consecutive time, they have reached the stage when well, Latunji decisive goal came within uh, that's the 10 minutes of that very game. And I love what I saw uh, yesterday remaining in that game. Now, also, let's go elsewhere. Talk about club football. Terry Murphy, uh, Moses Simon gets Mark Vivian full for award nomination. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's bring it now. In contention to that man, Mark Vivian Fo, who commonly played for Man City. Uh, during his playing time of blessed memory, uh, rest in peace, I could say. Award in France, also the Nigerian Doe, Terra Monkey, and Mother Simon. Uh, the award which recognizes the best African player in the French top flight has Murphy vowing for the honor after scoring his 50th goal in the French top flight last weekend. Murphy, who was also nominated for the award last season, has scored 10 goals in 23 league appearances for Nice this season. Meanwhile, for Mother Simon, who nearly tries. And register six assists in 22 league appearances for Nans before sustaining an injury on international duty last month has been ruled out for the remainder of the season. Notably, only two Nigerian players, Vicente Yama, Victor Sime, have won the award in the past. Among the contenders for the award are the likes of the Gabonese international, Pierre Mikobama Yang Masai, Algerian Do, Nabil Bentaleb for Leo Amin Gori, Place for State Reigns, Morocco, Paris and German star Ashraf Hakimi, and Senegal Amin Kamara, who plays for Mets. Additionally, last season winner and DR Congo Chancel Mbemba, uh, Marcel centre back, Avicos Osman Diakiti Rams, Murphy Nays, 
to make uh, around the use of uh, uh, that's Yashimiye, and also we first single of Monaco are also in the running. The winner of the award will be announced on Monday, uh, May 13th, 2024. I don't want to ask David E. Uh, who would get on this? I know. I think 50 goals for me is, a, is an amazing thing. He's going to break all the records. Terra Murphy's 50th goal. Otaka is the highest now. Oh man. He's going break out. The good part is um, we have players up front that are doing amazingly well. Right. There is a Terra Murphy. There is also our own uh, Victor Boniface who's, who did amazingly well yesterday mm -hmm. at the German Cup. And of course, Victor Osima is there. The only thing lacking in Nigeria is a proper and a good manager. Oh, bring up anybody. You talk about that. Um, it's been a long time I had a world teacher with you, Alamide. Manager, who go manage Nigeria, not best. You know, if you don't, <laughs> if you if you don't, tell us, I'm going to help you. <laughs> if, they, if, they call, if they call me, do I'll go manager. David, you go be assistant. <laughs> I know that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me, let's talk about Nigeria before we move to boxing. Uh, the NFF, uh, what man do you feel is the right man to, to give us, take us to where we need to be? Well, uh, um, because you think it, NFF, you don't think ourselves. Uh, honestly, honestly, I don't even know who they be. Of course, because I didn't thinking. expect them. Because I didn't expect them to sack Joseph Peseru. Oh I didn't expect God. them. Mm. This man, he don't carry us rich final. He goes to the finals. He won some games. He lost some. So you, are, you would have been able to learn from from the ones he didn't win and make some amendments. Bring in some players, you know, make some adjustments. But every time we just, you know, send coaches away, sack them every time. The team will never get better. But with time, if you can give coaches, better. coaches, um, give them time, let them fail and correct themselves too as well. But every time we just, you know, the sack, sack coach every time, bring it back, <laughs> bring Sassy, bring this one, bring that one. How do you even want to have a team when you don't have a coach? So even look at Ateta today that is on top of the on top of the pile. Yeah. See, they've defeated him before. Man City don't beat him well before. And he has and learned job, and now right? he has no how to play without conceding against Man City. So I think over the time we need to just let one person do it for a while. Give him space of maybe five years, six years. Let him make his mistake and you know, himself. To, to add to what you said, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's quite unfortunate. The NFF said the made it open a lot of persons sent an application yeah till tomorrow because i don't think they will want to declare it today till tomorrow the no, NFL has no come to say this this and this are the ones we are at least highlighting for the job it's quite unfortunate why we do and guess what super eagles is the biggest brand of football yeah. in nigeria i dare say in africa and unfortunately this in is africa. where we are where, 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 where we're left to. okay yes, yes. yes. More carry back, more run it another one. That one don't just the one side, we all leave on. Uh, quickly, let's go in the world of boxing. My dad will be happy for me to talk about this very man. Mike Tyson disappoint fans after spelling out new rules of fight against the YouTuber, ex YouTuber better word, uh, Jake Paul. Now boxing fans were left disappointed after the rules for Mike Tyson fight against Jake Paul uh, were confirmed last month. Now it was announced that Mike Tyson would return to boxing against YouTuber Ton Boxer, Jake Paul. At the AT&T Stadium, and Arl that's in Arlington, for Texas, July 20. The fight scheduled uh, to be streamed, uh, you know, talking about that very one, to be streamed uh, on the popular platform. And Netflix is on those very one, which we are waiting to know if Paul and Mike Taxon will really have this one. In a live boxing event at the AT&T Stadium, uh, you could talk about it, or uh, you want it, you want to miss it. Uh, that's a message from the Netflix saying you just can't miss it. You need to get loaded with us on July 20th, Saturday. Now, since the announcement, fans have been speculating about the rules. In a recent statement, a current report of seven year old Mike Taxi confirmed that the fight will not be officially sanctioned as a professional fight. He's trying to do what I don't understand. But let's go with more of the mm -hmm. Formula One. Vettel reveal amazing comeback. Talk to Mercedes New Deal. Now, four time world champion Sebastian Vettel has expressed that he does not feel too old to compete in Formula One and would potentially be interested in a return to the sport if the package was right. I don't know what's right about this. Now, Vettel gloves and helmet were hung up at the end of the 22 campaign following the two challenger season with Aston Martins. However, uh, with tennis states available on next year's grade and drivers like uh, Fernando Alonso racing into the 40s, the Texas year old Vettel admitted to considering a return to the championship with Levis Hamilton department Mercedes for Ferrari next season. A seat at the Silver Arrows is among uh, the top start after on the grid. When asked by reporters about his feeling regarding the offer, 
to drive a message. He's very responsive. Say, let me quote him on the show. He said, "I have had a conversation with him, talking about to to walk the message of his boss. Not really about the state. We did speak about the whole situation, short as well. Before we talk about God, David, come with me. Um, this man." Levis Hamilton to Ferrari next season. I'd love to ask you this question again. Mm -hmm. How big would this be for Ferrari? Is he making a game? Oh, well, um, Lewis Hamilton leaving Mercedes going to Ferrari and right. then uh, Vettel going from, <laughs> from Ferrari yeah. to Mercedes. But, you see, this is what happens in sports. Mm -hmm. You get to see a lot of persons do the movement from one uh, um, 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 car to another car, particularly in Formula One. Mm. I think it's going to be a big one for um, Lewis Hamilton to make right. that move. But I'm particular about uh, uh, Sebastian Vettel, right. who consistently have been giving us good results. Mm. So would that be a plus for Mercedes? We'll wait and see. Okay, so we don't have a lot of time. We need to go. Well, I'm, it's been amazing with you on the sideline. Are you there? Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you so much for staying with us on the show. Hopefully, we You're get welcome. to connect another time, right? Yeah. Thank you so much on um, the Sporting Public Show. We love you. Thank you. We bye 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 for now. Stay. We'll go talk after the show. Yeah, uh, David, uh, we need to go now. Right. Stay. We need to go. Um, our time is up. I uh, don't forget also a quick one. The news coming up for you. Don't go anywhere. Um, all of these basketballs. <laughs> well, the beautiful, the beautiful one of football that uh, we are talking about, Manchester United, Chelsea. Mm. It's not going to be a really, really big game. But for Manchester United, it's going to be a big game because. Um, now your club Villa has lost. It's your club. Aston Villa has lost. Everything so is on the detriment of my United. If Manchester wins, it's going to at least move them to some sport. And what if I put you... We're looking at the part yeah. where if one of the English teams gets to qualify away from the quarterfinals of the UEFA Champions League, then first five of the league will be moving to the Champions League. So, Manchester United, hopefully... Why are you not sure it? of your club? Now your club, now. How should I expect you to be like them? Then they play anyhow. Then they play anyhow. We need to go ahead and like to hang. Tend to like to hug. Thank you so much, David. Uh, we need to go now. Thank you so much for you also, wherever you watch over the world, and for skipping a call right here with us on Sports Republic Show. Hopefully, tomorrow will be another day, God willing. David Ewen will come back to give you more updates. I remain your host. My name is Kizike, and I'm the only football player without a Jesse. Peace out.